Hello everybody and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book and a pen and in your book I'd like to write down today's title which is Seed Dispersal. And for our Star Trek activity I would like to suggest how a bird eating fruit helps to move seeds from one place to another. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Did you make your suggestions? You can check your answer when we go through this in much more detail later in the lesson. Because today we're going to describe the four ways that seeds can be distributed. We're going to explain how different seed types are adapted to their method of seed dispersal. We are also going to link all the ideas from this lesson and our previous two lessons by recapping the process of pollination, fertilization, seed dispersal and germination. Let's look at how seeds can get from one place to another, starting with wind dispersal. The wind can carry seeds far away from the original plant, but not all the seeds will land in an area they can grow, and some of these seeds are going to be eaten by birds. This means that our plant has to produce lots of seeds to increase the likelihood that one seed will land somewhere and will begin to grow. And because these seeds are carried by the wind, they often have a very small mass. Seeds can also be dispersed by water. This is beneficial because these are often plants that need a large quantity of water to survive. So if that seed is dispersed by running water, it's likely to end up in a place where it's got lots of access to water. This seed will be dropped into the water by the plant and then the stream will take it away later to be implanted into the banks alongside the water. This makes sure that our plant's going to have an adequate supply of water so it can thrive. Our third method of seed dispersal is explosive. And these plants often have pods. So as this plant dries out, the pod begins to split. And when there's enough room for the peas to escape, the tension caused by the pod pushing the peas outwards will cause the peas to explode out of their pod. But because of that, the distance that these seeds will disperse is a lot less than other dispersal methods. Seeds can also be dispersed by animals in two ways. Some seeds can stick to animal fur. So when animals have grazed against it, they will carry the seeds away from the original plant. These seeds are later removed by the animal, usually by scratching or grazing against something else. The animals can disperse seeds in another way, because remember, our fruit contains seeds. And when birds or animals eat the fruit, they often eat the seeds as well. The animal cannot digest the seed. Remember, our seed has a protective coating around the outside, and so the seeds are excreted in the feces. This not only disperses the seed, but this feces also contains nutrients to help our seed to grow. For our next task, what I'd like to do is to match up our method of seed dispersal to the adaptation that that plant will have. And if you still want a challenge, I would like to suggest why palm trees grow hanging over the water. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. If you matched up your answers, let's have a look. Our adaptation of our explosive seeds are that they are contained in pods because they need that pod to build the tension so that they can explode. If our seed has been dispersed by going through the inside of an animal then it probably got there by having tasty fruit. If it's managed to move from point A to point B on the outside of an animal then it will have sticky leaves and seeds to stick to the fur of the animal. If our seeds are dispersed by the water then our plant is probably growing near a lake or a river which means our seed which dispersed via the wind have a large surface area so the wind can easily carry them away. Did you make any suggestions as to why palm trees grow hanging over the water? If you did, I'd like to put it down in the comments below. So now we've described the four ways in which seeds can be distributed and we've explained how our different seeds are adapted to their method of dispersal. Next, we're gonna link all the ideas from our plant reproduction topic. And to do this, I want you to describe how a plant goes from being pollinated to a new seed being germinated. And I've broken this down into four questions. Describe where the pollen is produced and where it will land on the flower. Describe how pollen causes the fertilization of an ovule. Describe how the seeds can be distributed. And describe how a seed germinates to become a new plant. And if you still want a challenge, I'd like to explain how you can tell our plant in our picture is insect pollinated. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. And if you need more time, pause the video. And when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. Have you described all your processes? Let's start with number one, describing where the pollen is produced and where it will land on the flower. The pollen is produced by the anther, which is held up by the filament. When this plant is pollinated, that pollen will stick to the stigma on top of the flower. 
This brings us to number two, describing how pollen causes the fertilization of an ovule. Our pollen tube is going to form from the stigma, down the style, and into the ovary. This allows the pollen nucleus to travel to the ovary and fertilize an ovule. This ovule then becomes our seed, and potentially our ovary will become our fruit. Which brings us to how seeds can be distributed, and they can be spread either by wind, water, animals, both internal and external, or explosions. Which brings us on to part four, how does a seed germinate to become a new plant? Remember our germination starts with our seed absorbing water from the soil. This then causes the seed to swell. That swelling will cause the seed coat to open. The root then grows down into the soil, which pushes the shoot upwards. The leaves then begin to sprout from the seed and start to photosynthesize and make their own glucose. And then the rest of the seed forms the sepals. And this recap of this process of the pollination, the fertilization, the seed dispersal and germination bring all the ideas from this plant reproduction topic together. We've got one more thing to do before we wrap this lesson up. I'd like to explain which of the following seed dispersal methods will transport their seeds the furthest from the parent plant. Now with an explain question, you need to say which one you think is going to disperse it the furthest and give the reason why. If you've got any really good answers, I would love for you to share them in the comments below. But that's everything for this topic. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.